Storage Wars is the hit A&E network reality show about a group of veteran buyers or bidders that go to storage facilities to try and purchase units that have been abandoned by their owners. In the state of California where the show takes place, the law states that the storage units may be auctioned off after three months of non-payment. Over the years, the show found itself in the middle of a few controversies including one of the show's main bidders, Dave Hester, being involved in a lawsuit claiming that the show was planting items inside these storage lockers to make for better television. No matter if the items inside these storage units are the real thing, they still make for some interesting television, especially the crazy things that they've found over the past 12 seasons. Since the buyers can only take a quick look at the storage units before making a purchase, they can't know whether they're going to find a locker full of junk or something valuable. Some of the finds that have been discovered in these storage lockers include jewelry, statues, old clothing and newspapers, and even pirate booty. With that said, let's see 10 Storage Wars deals that went beyond insane. Back in the late 2000s, a Florida USA radio station decided to purchase a locker containing documents and paper for around $300, not having any idea of what was in store. Deciding to play the Storage Wars game turned out to be a pretty good idea. Those documents and papers turned out to be photographs, handwritten lyric sheets, musical arrangements, contracts, and even royalty checks belonging to 60s superstars The Beach Boys. The locker had originally been rented in the 1970s, but around 2006 the owner stopped paying, and the contents were sold off to repay the bill and to clear the locker. After a lengthy court battle, which involved the band members trying to reclaim the material, it was eventually sold through a sealed bid auction for around $6 million. Another surprising find with a bit of a dark twist reportedly took place when an anonymous bidder bought a unit from the Storage Wars host the Dotsons for a paltry $400. Though at first the locker seemed to be full of worthless things, the new owner was soon overjoyed to discover an old trunk that was filled with a staggering $24,000 in cash. You would think that a surprising part was the fact that the value alone easily landed this find on a list of the biggest payouts ever overseen by the Dotsons, but it wasn't. The shocker was that all of the bills had had the faces drilled out of them. For some unknown reason, the previous owner had taken the time to remove the faces from the center of each bill, leaving a trunk full of faceless bills in their wake. Strange behavior aside, fortunately for the new owners, the bills were still considered legal tender. Though the show has had its fair share of toy findings, season 10's first episode featured another huge find, this time in the form of video games. Renee Nazota landed the locker for a meager $1,500 and found out that it was filled with vintage videos and game hardware plus cartridges. The collection was monstrous, filling up a large locker and assembled by a collector who knew their stuff. There was not a duplicate in the mix, with the dusty pile of memorabilia containing everything from rare Sega Genesis games to a copy of the NES game Bubble Bobble Part 2 that was worth several hundred dollars on its own. For this lucky buyer, the games were valued at a total of $50,000, just enough for the buyer to call it one of his best buys. When a Long Island contractor Barry paid $100 for a storage container in 1989, he couldn't have imagined he would discover an amazing find. When he and his brother cut the lock the next day, they found a white sports car covered in blankets. Little did they know who it belonged to. It was when Barry drove home with the car tied to the bed of his truck that the other drivers told him the vehicle was one of the submarine cars operated by James Bond in The Spy Who Loved Me. However, Barry had never seen any of the James Bond movies, so he decided to immediately rent that one and see what all the fuss was about. Soon, he found out that eight versions of the car appeared in the film and until then only seven of the eight had been accounted for. The car was used for promotions when the film was released, but how it ended up in Long Island is a mystery only a secret agent can solve. Later, the car was purchased at auction by Tesla founder Elon Musk for almost a million dollars. The next shocking find didn't actually take place in front of the camera. When the Storage Wars hosts were interviewed about the story, Dan and Laura Dotson explained how an ecstatic new storage locker owner had sold the unexpecting locker to the owner along with another unit for a meager $2,000 only to discover that one of them literally had a pirate's treasure in it. However, not long afterwards, they spotted three men lugging what appeared to be an extremely heavy but plain blue Rubbermaid toque out to their vehicle. Inside were gold doubloons and pieces of eight, all of which were at least least two centuries old. The haul added up to an unbelievable $500,000, leaving the happy new owners with a gargantuan profit 250 times what they paid for the pair of lockers in the first place. 
We are finishing up with surely the most insane case related to the show when Don Dotson and his wife Laura sold a unit for $500 in 2018. Not long after, a woman approached Dan and informed him that he had sold a unit to her husband, which contained a safe. When a locksmith opened the safe, the man was floored to discover a hoard of bills inside, which had been hidden away in the storage unit. The money added up to a mind-blowing $7.5 million, all in cash and all unclaimed. However, an attorney arrived soon afterwards informing them that that the safe and its contents actually belonged to his client. Confused and shocked, the owners turned down an initial offer of $600,000 as a reward for the return of the money, but afterwards accepted a counter offer of $1.2 million. Since the incredible find was reported, it's been widely speculated that the cash was from a cartel or mafia connection. Here, hold this for a second. Wow, look at how intricate this is. 150 for this one, 500 for that one. <gasps> Oh my goodness, this is so beautiful. Even if it's a remake, it's at least $200. These are all like English hunting scenes, easily $300. In one of the most wealth abundant episodes to air, Bitters Renee and Cassie Nizota found what looked like a whole museum in their locker. As the couple began unloading the treasures, they discovered an endless procession of high value pieces that ranged from ornate pottery to a beautiful grandfather clock in mint condition, and a set of Baroque by Wallace collectible silver that was easily worth at least two grand, along with an oil canvas painting that came with its own self valuing paperwork stating it was worth $8,000. The collection also included statues model ships, artistic flower pots, and some of the pieces came from Africa and Asia. Renee was thrilled and stated it was a kind of event someone chased their whole career. In the end, the locker was valued at $50,000 minimum, which made both Renee and his wife Cassie speechless by the unbelievable find. I mean, look at all this stuff. We're like sitting in a pile of cash right now. By the time we price everything and do our research, I'm telling you right now, we're going to make $50,000 on this locker. I mean, I have never ever found so much good stuff in one locker. Aw, I'm proud of you! Daryl Sheets, known as The Gambler, is one of the most known contestants, which comes as no surprise since he has been bidding on storage units for 32 years. Some of his greatest findings include a big comic book collection, four drawings by Picasso, and a letter written by Abraham Lincoln that sold for $15,000. However, his creepiest and the most insane find was an actual dead body that he found in a unit he bought. The corpse was wrapped in plastic and Daryl called the police immediately. After interviewing him, he was determined not to be a suspect as the police Police stated that the previous owner of the locker murdered his wife and stuck her in the storage unit. In 2010, Dave Hester proved he was one of the luckiest bidders on the show. He bid $750 on a storage unit filled with old newspapers. Although it seemed at first that he bought a load of outdated periodicals, it turned out that they were of great value. The large cache of newspapers had a really important publication date, August 16th, 1977, the date when Elvis Presley, the king of rock and roll, died. With such a large quantity of highly valued newspapers that were in great condition, Hester knew he had a fortune on his hands, and he was absolutely right. They turned out to be limited edition newspapers from a very important moment in history, valued at around $90,000. Even more surprising was the fact that someone would gather up that many collectible papers into one place and then lose the locker because they didn't bother to pay for it. When Shannon Wisnant found a barbecue smoker in the storage unit he bought in South Carolina, he thought he had made a lucky discovery. But when he decided to lift the lid of the smoker and take a closer look, he was shocked by what was inside. He discovered a human leg. It turned out that the amputated leg belonged to a Mr. John Wood, who had lost it in a plane crash in 2004. He said that the reason he was keeping the leg in the unit was so he could eventually be buried with it. Unfortunately, he lost it after he fell behind on payments. Initially, Wisnant gave the leg to the police who sent it to a funeral home. However, before he did that, Wisnant had been making a profit on the leg by charging adults $3 and kids $1 to see it. So, it wasn't long after he gave it away that he changed his mind and wanted it back. His request was refused by the funeral home, so he decided to try to persuade Mr. Wood to share ownership and profits. Wood refused by saying it was a despicable thing to do and that he didn't mind having the 15 minutes of fame, but he was not looking to profit off the leg. Thank you for checking this video out, and don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe for new videos every day. Turn that bell notification on and comment down below that you subscribed, and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Once again, thank you for watching and see you next time.